Hey everybody, Black Ninja 797 here, and welcome back to Myth Busting Mondays. In today's video, we have got a lot of interesting myths, but the final myth, and I think the one that you guys are going to enjoy the most, is going to end up being, can the Charger get the Gong Show achievement on Dark Carnival? If you guys end up enjoying today's video, please drop a like, comment, subscribe, follow, and all that beautiful stuff. But yeah guys, let's get on with this week's episode of Myth Busting Mondays. Myth. Can a spitter set a gas can on fire while a survivor is holding it? Alrighty guys, so myth number one is going to be submitted in by Ecrium. Now the way that we're going to do this is just basically really simple. We're literally just going to hold the gas can while a spitter spits on us while we aim the gas can in different directions. We can also try crouching to get it closer to the spit while still holding it, but there's really no way we can get the gas can to still make contact with the spit other than those few things while we're still holding just the way that the game is. So yeah, here goes nothing. So we have Globbersko holding a gasoline can while Dan is a spitter, and I'm just going to watch. And you can see that Globbersko is just simply standing in the spit. Nothing like too out of the ordinary. He's just doing what anybody else would do. And as you guys can see, the only thing that happened was that Globbersko ended up getting incapacitated, but the gas can did not get affected whatsoever. Not even a little bit of a noticeable difference. And then here's a clip of me crouching while looking directly at the spitter acid to give this basically the best possible chance. But even doing that, it did not work either. So I think it's safe to say that myth number one is just flat out busted. There's really nothing that we can do here other than what we've already done. Even if we were to do something like hypothetically give a direct impact where the spitter's cursor was lined up on the gasoline can, make direct contact, there's nothing even in the game files that allows for that to end up making where the gas can lights on fire. So I think it's safe to say that this just does not work. Myth, can a group of witches die to the airplane on the finale of Dead Air? Alrighty guys, so myth number two is going to be submitted in by Zoe. So what we're going to do guys, once again, very just literal, we're just going to spawn witches in front of the plane and just see if it ends up running them over. Because pretty much when it comes to the planes, or any of the other vehicles honestly in Left 4 Dead, it's a 50-50 toss up of whether or not that they will make collision and be able to kill players, or if they are just going to end up being intangible and just ignore everything. Alrighty guys, so let's end up spawning some witches on the runway. So Dan is causing the witch to show up now, and the plane is incoming very fast. So let's see if whether or not that the plane can indeed kill the witch. So here we go, the plane is making collision. And it looks like after the explosion is all settled down, that the witch is indeed alive. The witch did not die in the collision. You can end up seeing their red heads, that they are all alive and they are all completely fine. So that means that myth number two is also going to end up being busted. The witch cannot be run over by the plane on the finale of Dead Air, but it was at least worth a shot. Myth. Does the mounted minigun on the finale of Swamp Fever have unlimited ammo? Okay guys, so this myth is going to be submitted in by JJ Lipscom. Now here is the interesting things that we have found out about this myth, because there's quite a lot of them and you would be surprised. Number one, when it comes to the minigun, I don't know if you guys ever thought to do this, but if you no clip into the texture, there's actually no bullets in the drum mag that is on the left hand side. It is just completely empty. However, if you take a look very closely at the minigun, shell casings will fly out of the right hand side. So basically, we're getting ghost bullets where there is a bullet forming as we're pulling the trigger and just shooting from the middle all the way out to the right when the casing flies out. Not only that, but even though we had console commands and modified the game, even with infinite and unlimited ammo on in the gameplay, we were not able to disable the minigun cooldown, which prevents us from shooting any further for other than a limited time. And finally, while we were testing this myth, we found a brand new glitch in Left 4 Dead over a decade later, which is a visual bug where when you're on the minigun, your secondary and or primary weapons can end up increasing in magazine size because all the ammunition from the minigun gets transferred over to your primary and secondary weapons, and you can have a clip that has over 200 bullets in your secondary, for example, which is just ridiculous. Now, obviously, I want to reinstate that this is only a visual glitch. This does not last in terms of gameplay. It will immediately wear off the moment you let go of the minigun, so you can't walk around using a 200-round magnum, for example. So what did we learn today? We found out that if you no-clip into the minigun, you're technically shooting ghost bullets, which don't end up showing up until you pull the trigger. 
Also, in addition to that, we found a brand new glitch over a decade later where you technically can get a visual bug where you get extra magazine size for your guns when you're shooting the minigun, which is also really cool. And then lastly, we also realized that even with infinite and unlimited ammo enabled, it doesn't affect the minigun. Which means that unless we want to end up possibly digging the internet and finding a random chance of a mod that makes us that way it disables the minigun cooldown in Left 4 Dead, which could really just risk just getting a random virus on our PC, which is something we're just not willing to risk and take, I think that's safe to say that this myth is busted at the very most plausible, but basically busted because I can't verify if there's any mods that exist, and I just don't want to have a random virus that makes this that way when I look at my email one day that says I'm subscribed to Big Dicks Monthly. So I think it's safe to say that we can just leave the myth where it is. Myth. Can you be kicked for being AFK in a solo match of Back for Blood? Alrighty guys, so this myth is going to be submitted in by Tyler, and there's two things I want to talk about when it comes to this myth is that number one is that if you can get kicked hypothetically when it comes to the kicking system how long do you have to be afk to get removed from a match because if it's too early it will be a little bit frustrating especially given the fact that this is a single player portion of the game and also too is that when it comes to the kicking system what counts as inactivity is it going to be just purely not moving or is it just simply just standing still in the spawn and never leaving because i know some games treat afking differently with that in mind, the way that we're going to maximize the potential of this working in our favor to see if it can end up kicking you, we're going to end up having Tyler stand in front of an open safe room door while only the bots are keeping him alive and he will not touch his controller whatsoever. And this is going to be, once again, like I said, sped up footage, but I'm going to like give you guys kind of like a brief summary of what happens so that way we're just not here for five minutes just watching Tyler stand still. <laughs> So, since Tyler has played Back for Blood the most out of any of the other Mythbusters and has done so many different things, I trust him and his intuition. He knows Back for Blood like the back of his hand. And he ended up submitting this gameplay and also telling me his experience via DMs. And basically what he told me is that no matter what he did, no matter how many times that he replicated this, he could not personally get himself to be kicked. And that is a good thing because if you can get kicked from a solo match in any single player game, that would be stupid. So basically, long story short, this myth is going to end up being busted. At least from Tyler's gameplay and his experience, he was not able to get kicked. There could be the possibility that this used to be a thing and was eventually patched out, but as it currently stands right now on 12 19 20, 22, you can no longer be kicked from a solo match, at least until proven otherwise. Alrighty guys, so now we move on to the final myth, and the final myth is once again going to be can you get the gong show achievement by using a charger, specifically the charger's charging ability. So let's head over to Dark Carnival on our Smurf account where we have yet to earn the achievements and see if whether or not that this myth is confirmed or busted. Myth. Can a charger get the gong show achievement in Left 4 Dead 2? Alrighty guys, so the final myth is going to be submitted in by Globbersko, and as you guys can end up seeing here from the gameplay, that I do indeed not have the Gong Show achievement on this account. Alrighty, so here goes nothing. I am in front of the machine now, I'm going to charge any second. So here we go. And it looks like that from this first attempt, that the achievement did not pop. But don't worry, we have other ideas. One other idea we have in mind is to use Dan as a battering ram and seeing if I can slam his body into the machine and score but it looks like that this idea does not work either. And there also is no difference when I'm standing on the machine and charging or standing on the machine while charging Dan into the machine. So regardless of standing in front of the machine, to the side of the machine, standing on top of the machine, and using a human battering ram, the achievement did not pop using the charger. So the final myth is busted. You cannot get the gong show achievement by using a charger or his charger, anything that's related to the charger for that matter. But it is something that I thought was cool, and Glabersko, thank you for submitting it as always. But yeah, guys, that's going to be it here for today's episode of Myth Busting Mondays. And I truly hope you guys ended up enjoying it. And if you did, please consider dropping a like, comment, subscribe, follow, and all that beautiful stuff. If you guys would like to financially support the channel, I would tremendously appreciate if you guys could go check out my Patreon. It's always linked down below in all my YouTube video descriptions. Please also use my supporter creator code BLACKNINJA797 in all caps in the Fortnite and Epic Games item shops because Epic is my very first sponsor and they're sponsoring today's video so shout out to Epic Games. But yeah guys, I hope you ended up enjoying seeing another YouTube video from the most unique YouTubers you're ever going to see. Thank you for watching guys, I love all of you and peace out.
Hey meme lords, Jesus here. And you better have enjoyed that video there by the eternal god Daddy Ninja. You should probably subscribe too, or the mighty Moab will come for your balls. If you enjoyed the video, you might like it too. And give me the memes. Flash, bang, boom. Game. <laughs> Thank you. Rayman got disabled somehow. My bad. I like uh, 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 wait. Uh, don't be uh, fucking uh, infected, uh, John. But that's how you get the uh, achievement. Oh, I'm, uh, oh my, uh, wait. Uh, I'm that's stupid. how the achievement uh, supposed to go. Yeah, yeah I was about to say, that's your myth. Know. That's your myth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't uh, know, but uh, I think uh, something uh, is coming uh, to me. Uh, come, come on, first gonna be like, yo, John. What I want you to do is see. My myth is that you have to get the achievement supposedly by using a charger. I want you to not use the charger. All right. All right. Thanks.